Rotator cuff muscle examination. There are four rotator cuff muscles. The supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis. Each muscle has its own function. These functions can overlap with other muscles in this group or with other muscles. For example, shoulder abduction, it can come from the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, or the deltoid. The external rotation of the shoulder can come from the infraspinatus or the teres minor. The internal rotation of the shoulder can come from the teres major. The latissimus dorsi, the subscapularis, and the pectoralis major. These rotator cuff muscles are commonly injured or affected. To diagnose which muscle is affected by the injury or by the pathology, each muscle has to be isolated and tested. The supraspinatus muscle. The best test for the supraspinatus muscle is the Jobs test, the empty can test. And this is how it is done. The patient is standing or sitting upright. The arm should be anteriorly flexed at the level of the shoulder. The patient will fully pronate the arm into the empty can position with the thumb is pointing downwards. The patient should resist the downward force applied on the forearm by the examiner. Pain or weakness indicate a supraspinatus tendon lesion. The infraspinatus is a strong external rotator of the shoulder with the arm at the side, and this is how the muscle is tested. The infraspinatus muscle is usually tested by testing the external rotation of the shoulder with the arm to the side. Test external rotation of the arm against resistance. External rotation lag test. The examiner passively rotate the arm into full external rotation. Positive test when the examiner let go of the arm and the patient is unable to maintain position of full external rotation. The tear is minor. The horn blower test. The external rotation is tested with the arm held in 90 degree of abduction. Positive test if the arm falls into internal rotation. The subscapularis is an internal rotator of the shoulder. There are several tests for the subscapularis. The belly press test. The patient is standing with the hand of the affected arm resting against the stomach with the elbow anterior to the mid axillary line. The patient is then asked to press the belly against the affected arm without moving the elbow. Failure to maintain the elbow anterior to the mid axillary line while pressing against the belly indicate predominantly a subscapularis tendon tear. In the bear hug test, the patient is asked to place the palm of the hand into the opposite shoulder with the elbow anterior to the body. The patient will maintain internal rotation of the shoulder in this position. The examiner will then attempt to externally rotate the arm. Positive test will result when the patient shows weakness of the arm compared to the opposite arm. Both of them test the upper subscapularis. The liftoff test is a good test for the lower subscapularis. The liftoff test, 
The patient is standing with the affected arm internally rotated behind the back, so the dorsum of the hand will be resting on the lumbar area. The examiner will passively lift the arm away from the patient's back. Once the examiner releases the arm, failure to maintain the position of the arm away from the back, that would indicate subscapular tendon tear. I hope this video was helpful.